and hello everyone welcome back to another code wars video it has been quite a while since the last one and yeah i've just been so busy i didn't have any time to do code wars videos i made like two but i didn't have the time to actually edit them and i just kind of forgot about them and just left them and let them rot anyhow let's continue with the video so this will be a c plus plus code wars challenge called sum of digits digital root so let's read what they say digital root is a recursive sum of all digits in a number. So we already know it's going to be a recursive function, it's going to call itself. Given n, take the sum of digits of n. If that value has more than one digit, continue reducing it, reducing in this way until a single digit number is produced. The input will be a non-negative integer. If you didn't understand what they said there, don't worry, me neither. I usually do a bit better with these visualizations here. So basically, if we get 16, we should split it up between 1 and 6. Then we should add 1 plus 6, and then we get 7. Again, that's what we get. If we get 942, for example, we'd get 9 plus 4 plus 2, because 942 is 9, split, then 4, then split, then 2. And if you add all of them together, you get 15. 15 itself is still more than 9. So if it's more than 9, we have to send it through the function again. And then it's 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. And then you just, you just do that the whole time. So it's not too difficult. You know, it's kind of just a, a try and maybe get it. I'm at least not as trash in C++ as what it was when watching my first videos. Because, wow, I'm a bit better now. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to place it here. So you don't have to worry about me just struggling my way through this. Because, you know, I at least have a few months of C++ behind me. Okay. So in here, we need to do all of that. So right off the bat, I'm going to declare an int number. This will be the number that gets added. So when we have like 15, for example, that will be one. This will contain one plus five. So if one plus five, this will be six then, if you get what I mean. Now, what we can do is we can implement a while loop here. So while, and we can say n is less, I mean less, more than zero. Because once n reaches zero, this while loop should stop. And you'll see why I say this in a second. So first we can say number is, or number plus equals n modulo 10. Now the reason I'm saying this is because let's say we get 15. 15 modulo 10 is equal to five, right? So then in number we currently have zero plus five. So that's what we have in number because number starts out as zero. And then after this, we want to say n is equal to floor. And you want to say n divided by 10. And to use floor here, we need to import cmath. I'm going to go like this and say cmath. Because cmath is, or floor is instead of cmath. Anyhow, we want to import that. And we want to use floor. We want to use floor because let's say we get 15. Now, 15 divided by 10, that's not 1, is it? Yeah, so we use floor because then we'll automatically bring it down to one. We don't want to use seal because then we'll get more than what we bargained for. We always want to get less than rather than more. Anyhow, so then n will basically be equal to one. So n is equal to one. And since n is still more than zero, we are basically telling number, so number here, which is equal to five, should then become five, plus one because n modulo 10 and that is one modulo 10 so if we say lua one modulo 10 we get one so yeah then it's five plus one and we get six and then n on the other hand which is one so n is equal to one will then become zero because if we go here and say i believe we can just go floor and we say one divided by ten then yeah, I might have to call math here, math.floor. There we go, we get zero. So yeah, just because if we say one divided by 10, we'd get this. But since we're saying dot floor, it will automatically just bring it down to its lowest and make it zero. And since n is zero, it's going to break out of this while loop and number will should be returned. So we can just say return number, right? And yeah. So, and now number would be six. 
and I'm just going to run this to make sure this program actually works. I didn't even test it out. So here we go. If you get Hello World, then it works. Okay, there we go. Now, we're not done yet because whilst this has no problem with it, what if number is, for example, if we go back to this example here, what if number returns 15 here, for example? Then we'll have to do this again because, for example, this right there, well, we will return 15. But 15 isn't a valid value because we need to get a one digit answer. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we, it's a simple if statement. So we can just check if the number is less than 10, then we can return number here. Otherwise, we can just return uh, the function itself. So we're going to create a recursive function here because it's calling itself and just pass a number. And it's just going to call itself, do it again. And let's say it does get six, then it's going to return six, or it does get five, it's going to return five, what not. And yeah, this is about all you'll need. In fact, I actually wonder if we can even make this smaller and say return if number is less than 10, then number else, and let's copy this. I wonder if this will work because I did learn something about these shorthand ones, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's see, maybe this will work. It's basically the same as we did, it's just a shorter if statement. So if this, then this, if not, this. So this is the else statement here. Anyhow, that just makes the code a little bit cleaner. If we go here, if it doesn't work, we just control Z. We can just say digital root, and we can pass in, uh, what's the first one they pass in? 16. Save that, and if we run this, we should get, yeah, seven. And we do get seven. Okay, what's the next one? 942, we should get six. Glad to know this if statement actually works. That's very nice. We get six. Okay, and I'm just going to taste the last one. I'm going to skip that middle one. And this one should give us two. Save that. Run this. I didn't mean to put that bracket there, but it's fine. Okay, and we get two. So it does work. So let's actually put this in there and make sure it does. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go here instead of this. Paste it there. And then I'm going to copy this CMath. And I'm gonna put it right here, just so we have ability to use this floor here. And I don't know if there's a way to uh, style this in a nice way. Nah, I don't want to do that. No, I think I'm gonna have to style it on my own. So let's tab this up and just tab this as well. Okay, and we're going to run this and see if it works. So we're gonna attempt. And here we go, we passed it all. So I'm assuming this is perfectly fine. Let's see what other people did. Let's feel dumb. Ah, I ranked up. That's very nice. I like that. And I'm very satisfied with this kata. Okay. So let's, wow, one line. Negative, negative Z, modulo nine plus one. Holy moly. That it, what? I can't even comprehend what that does. Okay, that's fine. Then we get int n and we, okay, they basically did what we did here. Okay, okay, not not bad. Ooh, this one is nice. n minus one, modulo nine plus one. That's pretty cool. Okay, now I feel ultimately stupid because look at how smart all of these people are. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and could follow along. And I'll see you all again in the next Code Wars Challenge.